Up until this point, I have introduced you to the concept of UDIMs and how to set up UDIMs uh, onto an asset. But the one thing I haven't really talked about, and it's relatively obvious, is resolution. So now, uh, the one thing that UDIMs really help you with is increasing resolution to a single asset. Now, for now, the only thing we've done is we have applied, or rather we have moved UVs for individual objects over to um, you know, the, these separate UDIMs, right? But what happens if you have one object and it needs more resolution? So this is what we're going to explore in this video. So let me take one asset out of here, or at least one object out of here that I'm going to add a lot of resolution to. So if I double click on this package here, right, and it could be anything, I mean, you could do this example to a sphere if you want. I'm going to add a new scene. Okay, and I'm going to paste this object into it. And you know what, I'm going to remove the OpenGL. And you can really do this in any application you want. So let's look at the UVs and the UVs look like this. So let's just say I want to increase the resolution to just this portion uh, of the model because we might get super, super close to it, right? And whatever kind of size of texture that we have right now might not be adequate. So let me move the UVs for this part of the model, okay? And I'm going to go into uh, lasso rectangle. And I'm just going to start splitting. And I should really be in tear off mode over here. And I'm just going to split it up into several pieces. Okay. So now I have one, two, three, four. Okay, so now if I apply a UV test shader, and then I apply a single texture, as you can see, this texture up looks very big over here, and when you zoom in, you're going to see some pixelization, right? When I zoom into here, oh, wait a minute, I can zoom in a lot closer before I actually get to see the pixels on this texture. So now let's do a comparison between how uh, Painter works with UDIMs and how Mari works with UDIMs. First, let us go into Painter. So we do the same thing as we did last time. You go back to the item list, to your object that hasn't been saved yet. You want to save it. And I'm going to save and FBX, so package 01, okay, I will go into Painter, I will make a new scene, select the object package, and yes, I want to create a texture set per UDIM tile, and the default resolution is fine, and press OK. Okay, so we have our asset within Painter. Now, when I go through these tiles, you will notice that there are, in fact, several, several UDIMs that have been created for me. So now, where is the, rather, where are the limitations inside of Painter? Well, let me go into them very quick. If I go into UDIM number one and I apply this machinery package, actually, you know what? Before I do that, let me very quickly bake some textures. So I'm going to bake the supporting textures for this entire object. And when we get back to it, I'll start applying the actual materials. Okay, so if I now go into my separate UDIMs inside the texture list, you will notice that all my supporting maps have been baked. Okay, awesome. So let me just go to number 101, drag and drop this machinery smart material, and that's of course under shelf smart materials. Let me just drag and drop it into my layers. 
and it's automatically going to create this shader. And of course, it's going to get all the different data that it needs to feed into the different slots. OK, awesome. So I have now applied a material to a single item. And I'm going to repeat the same action for the rest of these items. Now, hopefully, you are already noticing the limitations of Painter. Now, the biggest limitation right now is that, as you've noticed, I am applying uh, this material over and over and over again. Now, if I was to use something like Mari, I would only have to do this once. I would apply my shader, and that would be it. Right Now, the, to really further illustrate this uh, limitation uh, within Painter, I am going to now add a layer that I'm going to paint on. So I've added an extra layer on, side of, uh, on top of uh, UDEM 1005, and that is this UDEM in particular. And I'm going to try to paint on it. All right. And as, of course, as you might have noticed, I am painting on top of this UDEM, but not on this. Now when I try to paint on this, oh, I am denied. I have to go into the next patch to try to continue painting, but oh, wait a minute, now I have to make another layer altogether, right? Place it on top and get back to painting. Of course, when I'm painting, it disappears. This is not a very good workflow. I mean, the nice thing is, is that you can, in fact, work with it, right? But it's not ideal. I have to go between my patches and then I have to paint and try to guess exactly where I'm at. And this is the one advantage that Mari has over uh, Painter. Painter can do a lot of things for you, a lot of heavy lifting in terms of uh, setting up your shaders and uh, doing things like uh, painting with particles uh, to do things like, let me just illustrate very quickly, uh, to do things like, like this, right? I mean, this is pretty bloody cool, but when it comes time to actually painting across seams, as you can see, I can't actually paint on the bottom until I've actually selected a patch, right? And then I have to know exactly which one it is, right? So I can paint across here, but as soon as I reach the border, it stops. This is not very cool. So what I will do uh, now is take the same object into Mari. But before I do that, I have to go back into Modo, and I'm going to extract, or rather save this object, not as an FBX, but as, a, as an Alumbic file. A Lumbic file tends to work very nicely inside of uh, inside of Mari, so that's what I like to use. So it is now an Alumbic file, and let me go into Mari. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is create a new project. I'm just going to name this test, or package rather. I'm going to create, or rather, choose my mesh. Now the window is on my other monitor. I'm going to choose the FBX and our ABC, and I hope it's going to work because I generally export out of Maya, not out of uh, Modo. Hit OK. Okay, so we have our package within uh, Mari now, and when we go to UVs, our UVs are in here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's create a shader. We don't have to do this, but I just like to. Okay, and choose color. So I am in this window over here. So what I've done is I've made a BRDF shader, and I've went from current channel to color. So here we have our color, um, our color channel. And inside here I have my layers. So I will be painting on this layer right here. So just to quickly illustrate the power of Mari over uh, Substance Painter, see, it actually takes very long to uh, swap textures, so I don't really, or rather brushes, I don't really care for that, to be honest. Okay, as you can see, I don't really have to care about switching items at all. It just automatically does it, right? This was 
quite a bit faster when you're working on, on things like characters and you have a character with a lot of information, a lot of items. So now if we go ahead and explore our UVs after it updates, it's taking a little too long. We're going to go into UVs and as you can see I have painted across all my UVs. So if I choose a different brush, it could be anything, go back to ortho. And you know what, let me just change my color. I can paint across any of this and not have to worry at all about, um, again, managing my, uh, my UVs at all because it's all managed by Mari itself. Now, the downside, of course, to Mari is that you don't have the pretty presets, you don't have the particle brushes, and you don't have IRA and things like that. So, and also the amazing bakers that you have within, within Painter. I mean, Painter will extract a lot of very useful information for you uh, within these and then automatically use them inside the smart materials. That is one massive advantage that you have inside of Painter. And when you're working inside of, uh, on props, um, it speeds up the process uh, tremendously. However, again, in terms of resolution, in terms of uh, uh, what do you call it, actual flexibility, um, color uh, rendition and actually color um, grading and things like that, I think Mari takes the cake.